on, um, I'm going to ask Jonathan um, to give us some, perhaps more in partly in discussion role, but you're going to do a bit of scene setting too, I think. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, I'll just, um, you know, I, I won't speak for too long because it's important, I think, to have time to, to discuss things with Alan. But um, I just want to say a couple of things about why aid dependence matters as an issue in the aid debate. And I think it matters uh, a very great deal at the moment for donors to think about. And then maybe a couple of things about, <coughs> about trends in aid and uh, actually in, in politics uh, that I think are, are, are fairly important and, w and w which mean that this discussion is, is, t is taking place at the moment in, in a significantly different era than possibly you know, five years ago, certainly 10, 15 years ago, and the kind of things that Alan was talking about are um, more possible. And then lastly, very quickly, um, uh, some of the risks that I think are also here. But uh, um, Alison, please do interrupt me after five minutes and, and we'll just, I'll just shut up. Um, so firstly, why does aid dependence matter? It's, it's funny, I was at a meeting yesterday talking about the latest um, re uh, African economic outlook. There was a large African diaspora um, uh, in, the, in the audience. And talking about the issue of aid dependence with the African diaspora is never very hard. It usually emerges from a conversation. Again, talking with thought leaders on the African continent, the concept and the issue of aid dependence is, is ever present. It's an issue that more and more people uh, are, are realizing is a constraint on um, not just economic development, but all, all kinds of development, mm -hmm. uh, and especially institutional development. And yet, talking about it sometimes uh, on, in, in donor circles is just, it's just not very normal. The concept of aid dependence has to enter the discussions and the research around uh, uh, aid and growth. I don't think, and I don't want to say, and as a good researcher, I'm going to sit on the fence about whether it's a massive problem, whether it's a minor problem, what one deals with it, and, and especially uh, whether aid needs to reduce in the short, medium, or long term. But the, the, the fact that it needs to be discussed is what I want to, to raise, um, and I think it needs to be on all of our agendas. In, in, a, in a book that I wrote, I set out four impacts of aid. The direct impact, which is what we normally discuss, um, how many children's lives are saved, how many schools are built. The macroeconomic impact, which has been on the agenda for some time. The IMF classically talks a lot about the kind of uh, impact that large amounts of inflows will cause um, on an economy. The policy impacts, and those are the kind of conditionalities that we've talked about for a long time. What we hardly ever talk about, or, so to, or, or like increasingly now, are these institutional impacts, the impacts of, of aid dependence on the growth and development of institutions that uh, are crucial and that don't get talked about very much. The concept of institutions is talked about a lot, and to quote from the Africa Commission, uh, which was a very important document a few years back, Africa's history over the last 50 years has been blighted by two areas of weakness. These have been capacity, the ability to design and deliver policies, and accountability, how will a state answers to its people. Note that it's not talking in there specifically about economics, it's talking about the politics of the issue, and that's quite a significant move in donor analysis in the last couple of years. Um, what, uh, what are the kind of trends? Well, I, 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 I want to share a couple of numbers that I think will um, be of interest. Firstly, the vast majority, and this is also relevant for donor thinking, the vast majority of poor people, uh, those living on less than a dollar a day, live in countries that could in no real way be described as aid dependent. We're talking 75% of the 1.2 billion people in the world that live on, one, that live on less than a dollar a day don't live in countries where aid is a very significant part of the economy. And that, by, by very significant, I'm, t I'm talking over 3 or 4%. Um, in Uganda, it is a significant part of the economy. But most people, we know about India and China, but most people live in countries where not only is aid not a significant part, but where aid has never really been a significant part of the economy. And we're talking for the last 30 years. You know, in India and China, where the vast majority of poor people live, aid is less than 0.5% and has been for 30 years. So again, in the donor mindset, we have to get away from the idea that what we do for development is aid. We have, it, 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 it's, it's very different. And the second um, kind of myth buster is whether aid went up or not in the 90s and 2000s. I've been doing some numbers on this. In general conversation, we assume that aid went down in the 1990s and up in the last 10 years. And that's certainly true when we look at it from the donor perspective. When we look at it from the recipient perspective, especially in the 
highly aid-dependent countries. In the 1990s, aid as a percentage of their GDP went up. And in the last 10 years, aid as a percentage of GDP in aid-dependent countries such as Uganda has gone down. And that's not because aid overall has gone up and down. It's because clearly of the well, what's going on in the recipient yeah, countries, yeah. and a large part of that is growth. And that's what I'll come on to. If you, if you give me two more minutes, I'll try and I'll try and uh, sum up. What, what 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 are the tendencies and the and the, and the reasons why the current era is seeing um, an emergence from aid dependence? It's extremely good news. A general emergence from aid dependence and a slow emergence in some areas. Firstly, it's growth. Now, I won't even begin to to try and answer where that growth has come from. What, what an incredibly difficult question. But nevertheless, it's definitely happening in the majority of African countries, and some of them really significantly. And that clearly has an impact on the relationship between aid and GDP. Um, and secondly, I, I, I want to emphasize that aid dependence is not just measured in numbers. And it's the dependence that matters rather than the aid. Dependence is actually a political uh, thing. And I think that the growth of the importance of emerging actors across the world, uh, especially we all know about China and India, but Latin America as well, um, it's, it's, the aid dependence has been a relationship between African countries and largely the West. And that is massively changing. Not, not uh, <coughs> that much yet, but definitely moving in that direction. So it's possible for, for recipient countries to assert themselves more, and we're seeing that all over the place. Paris Declaration, yes, it's helping. Sierra Leone, a heavily aid-dependent country, not one that's growing, has just produced its first aid policy. And two years ago, a research done on Sierra Leone could not find a single civil servant that could think of a time that aid had been refused. In the new aid policy, there's a section, and I just had a look at it last night, that says when to refuse aid. Now, this is the kind of just slight change in uh, understanding of the role of aid that is a political change. Um, and I suppose, um, just to, to, to finish off, what are the risks? Well, and these are some of the things that have been touched on by Alan as well. I think that while there is a lot of growth in Africa, if you look at the re some, of, some of the really uh, growing economies, um, DRC, Angola, Mozambique, we know where the growth is coming from mm -hmm. in there. And, and, and as Alan said, it's resource extraction. It's actually... Interestingly, it's also in other countries agricultural prices that have improved, and that's much more important mm. for poverty reduction and jobs. But the, but, the, but the focus, and that is also happening, but the focus on resource extraction is, I think, a danger with regard to um, re reduction in dependence, because it's not just dependence on aid that matters, it's dependence on a particular sector of the economy that skews the accountability and governance that are vital to development and that Anna has talked about. Great. Thank you very much, um, Jonathan. Lots of good stuff in there.